Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. To the place of the animals go. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to build a naturalistic live vivarium like the ones I have right here. Okay, so I'm gonna do a voiceover for this video. So right here is a great stuff pond and stone foam. So this is what I use for the background. You just wanna make sure you shake it really well before you use it. And also, um, be sure you wear gloves because this stuff is really hard to take off. Right here, I used two pillows on the side of the door so that the doors won't break because sometimes it can break because the doors are just too heavy. So right here is me putting the background on. So. You don't want to put too much because keep in mind this foam will expand a lot so you don't want to overdo it unless that's what your intentions and also you can also carve it out as well right here is me putting the background so i decided to use some bark and then you want to do this really quick because the foam will start to dry out and you want to make sure that the background will stick onto the foam so kind of have the design that you wanted before you start spraying the foam. So that is the design that I prefer to do. Just let two to three days for it to dry out um, so that you can start cutting the, the foam. The reason why that you want to cut the foam is because the silicone will not stick to the outer surface of the foam. You see right there where it's, where it's at? You want to take that part off and have it be rough like that so that the foam can stick onto that part right there. So basically what you do is just cut the whole top layer of every single part that's showing. Um, so it wasn't too much because I had most of the background being bark, so it was really quite easy. Sometimes for those big enclosures, they take a long time, but since this was only 18 or no 12 by 12 by 18, it was a lot faster. So right here is the silicone. Um, this is the clear silicone that I got off of Amazon. I'll put all the links to the silicone, the foam, um, what else the background materials everything that you need for this enclosure the lighting i'll put it in the description so that you can um, get it yourself as well because you don't want to use other kinds of silicones or foams that are not safe for your animals so what, the, what you do with the silicone is just this is basically like a glue that you want to glue your substrate onto the background so you do the whole top layer i did not i did not do it over the the bark so i just did it all over the black foam and then i just Kind of like smeared all over the place just to make sure it gets every single inch of the black part this is very messy and also um it smells awful as well so you might want to wear a mask and also do it outside because this stuff smells really bad so after that you quickly want to start adding your substrate for the background so what i use right here is sphagnum moss i decided to put sphagnum moss between these two branches right here and then for the rest of the outside of it i wanted to use i believe i use soil yeah soil with uh repti bark and i believe eco or just a little combination of all three of them so you kind of want to just press down to make sure it sticks to the silicone so i'm just pressing down everything on here and then make sure you cover every single part because if you don't cover it there's going to be a blob of silicone there so uh, I just put a little bit of extra all over the place and then you just let that dry for about a day or so. That doesn't take as long as the foam since the silicone does dry out fast. And I would, like I said, recommend keeping it outside as it's drying. So right here, we're going to test to see if it stayed. This is like a day later or so. Yeah, I think it's a day later the next day. So it looks like it all sticked right here. I just kind of like pat the background just to make sure that I get any excess um, substrate off of the background. So there it is. And then down here, you want to take all that stuff out because down there, you can be putting the hydro balls for the drainage layer. So kind of just vacuum all the substrate out of there. Right here is me cutting the screen because you want to have the exact dimensions of the bottom part of the enclosure um, next to the rep to the, not the, rep, the hydro balls. So these are the hydro balls. This is the drainage layer. So what this does is when the water goes through the soil, it will go through the screen and also to the hydro balls. These hydro balls absorb that water so that your, so this, this is basically just to prevent um, overwatering your plants. So you want to put that screen so that the soil doesn't mix with the hydro balls. So I just use soil here. 
And then from there, you just want to start adding your plants. Um, these plants I got from the Super Show, so I just decided just to take off all the remaining soil that was previously there, just in case they added any kind of chemicals or anything to the plants. So I just water it down all the way to the root. And yeah, you just basically just decorate the enclosure how you like it to be. I added about three, four plants in here. This was really small a tank, so I didn't have too much to work with, but I really liked how this enclosure came out. So now just, I just took it inside. I missed it all down, added the light, and you're basically good to go, guys. So enjoy. I love how this enclosure came out. It's small, but it still looks really nice. So down here, I added some, the well, obviously the soil is down here. On top of the soil is some sphagnum moss and then leaf litter on top of that. With the hide, there was about four plants in here and also added some sphagnum moss on top of this branch here. So really liked how this enclosure came out. Um, also, you wanna add some of this lighting as well to keep the plant alive. So without the light, these plants will not survive in here. So you want to add this light. I'm sharing these lights with this one as well. I might just buy a huge long one just to go on all of them. Um, but for now, they're sharing. Here's another example of another live vivarium here. This one's an 18 by 18 by 18. And then another example is this one as well. So you can just get really creative with the vivariums, add different kinds of plants, some moss, and just get really creative with it, guys. Also, I forgot to mention, you can also add some isopods and springtails in your enclosure. I haven't done it just yet. Well, I did add some springtails because I had a lot of them, but I'm breeding the isopods. Isopods are basically like a cleanup crew. They'll clean up the poop and also any kind of dead things that are in here, insects. Um, and also the springtails will clean up any kind of mold that's in here. So it's basically like a cleanup crew. Uh, everything just recycles in this enclosure, so um, it can just stay up to date and nice and clean. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I also listed all the supplies that I use from my vivarium down below in the description. So if you want to build your own enclosure, um, everything that you need is down below. By the way, I did that voiceover in one take and I felt like it was kind of rushed, but voiceovers are hard guys, okay? All right, so today's post notification shout out goes to Shem Mally. Thank you so much for turning the post notifications. If you want a post notification shout out as well, be sure you turn them on and then comment down below when done so I know who has done that. Thank you so much for watching and until next time guys, peace.